13-year-old Ahmed Mohammed, who was suspended from an Irving, Texas school after officials mistook his school project for a bomb, spent another day out of school today. Mohammed's arrest, he brought a homemade clock to school, stirred a global social media frenzy. Hari's back with that. The hashtag I stand with Ahmed went viral for a third straight day on Facebook, Twitter and elsewhere. President Obama jumped in yesterday too, inviting him to visit with a tweet that read, cool clock Ahmed, want to bring it to the White House? We should inspire more kids like you to like science. It's what makes America great. For his part, the teen said he did not plan to return to the school and was grateful for overwhelming support. I built the clock to impress my teacher. But when I showed it to her, she thought it was a threat to her. So, so it was really sad that she took a wrong impression of it and I got arrested for it later that day. Thank you to all my supporters on Twitter, Facebook, all social media. Thank you all for helping me. I would never got this far if it wasn't for you guys and not just you guys, everybody. Some perspective from a part of the American Muslim community. Nihad Awad is the executive director of the Council on American Islamic Relations, which has been working with Ahmed and his family. Mr. Awad, thanks so much for joining us. So tell me uh, about your contact with the family. Yeah, uh, from, from the beginning. Uh, when this happened to the family, the family contacted our office in Dallas. And we recognized that this was uh, another case of unfortunate uh, Islamophobia and uh, targeting uh, of young people just because of uh, their faith tradition, not because of their deeds or their behavior. And uh, we managed to uh, tell his story, and his narrative now dominated the, the, the story because the, the school officials, uh, I think, failed him when they accused him, when they called the police on him. Uh, he was arrested, he was detain detained, uh, interrogated without the presence of his parents, and this was totally unnecessary. Mr. Awad, why do you think this story is resonating so much, even to non-Muslims around America? Well, I, I think it, it's a human story. Uh, this is a young, uh, genius uh, inventor uh, who wanted to impress everyone, and he, wa he wanted to, to do better. He wanted to m build things uh, to improve uh, the world. I spoke to him yesterday, and he told me that he wants to create things and his father told me that he fixes everything around the house. So at this young age, to have a brilliant teenager who is involved and has a passion in science and innovation, we should cherish this. And that's why I believe he was able to tell his story through his invention. He's young, he's cute, adorable, intelligent. Uh, and I think that got him a lot of support. Definitely with the help of an advocacy organization like ours, we managed to also get his story out. So are, are you advocating or counseling him to take legal action? And if so, what's the basis of that action and against whom? I think the most important thing is to restore his confidence. Uh, the president has uh, uh, supported him and he stood for him publicly. Uh, and he led by example uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, and other leaders in our society, in the industry, in the faith tradition has stood by him, and that was the most important thing, is to restore and reinstate his confidence and his dreams to change the world, to be a better world. The legal action, I think, is being considered. We just want to make sure that this story and this experience does not happen to other people. Is this indicative or emblematic of actions against Muslims around the United States. Is that one of the reasons that uh, people are paying attention to this, where they can see this in themselves? Unfortunately, I have to say yes. It is, it is widespread. Uh, there is a, a poisoned atmosphere of Islamophobia that has plagued our countries, cities, and towns. It has filtered even through uh, the school system. Uh, we, we hear many, many stories like this. Uh, luckily, Ahmed uh, is clever. He was able to tell his narrative. But there are many untold stories nationwide. And we as a nation have to start a frank conversation. And I urge our national leaders, religious leaders at their homes, in their places of worship, everywhere, we have to fight against xenophobia, any kind of phobia, and just reward diversity, but not punish diversity or punish people just because of their faith traditions. Uh, finally, what would you like to see? What would you like to see happen at the school, at the local police department? 
I would like the school to look uh, really at what they happened. And they should, they should not justify what they did. What they did was wrong. Mm -hmm. And they have sent the wrong message to teenagers nationwide, not only in their school. And uh, I would like that to be the last story. But unfortunately, knowing the history of our mm -hmm. society, uh, we learn, but sometimes slowly. All right. Nihad Awad, Executive Director of the Council on American-Islamic Relations. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.